Look at that. You've got the winged ones and all the rest going in and out of this giant underground labyrinth of ants with another escape hole right there and another escape hole right there. All right, well, this is Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. Welcome. This is kind of a weird episode of Wolf Tales. This Wolf Tales is a walk and talk because I just feel like going on a walk. And what do I always do? I walk around the drainage pond. And while I'm walking around the drainage pond, take a look at the sky. This is only a GoPro sessions that I'm filming with. Everybody always says, hey, let's, you know, I wanna go fishing around, you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's not even 3. And here's what's starting, if you could see it. All these black clouds. And I'm telling you, they are moving wickedly fast. As I always say to people, we start early, we finish early. And the reason being on a fishing charter, you do that in Jacksonville, Florida, is for the sheer reason that getting hit by a storm out at the inlet, down the beach, in the river, is not something you want. So we always have to be back relatively early. So we always leave at seven during the summer. It doesn't matter. If you wanna go later and all that, that's a winter thing. And now I'm covered in other little ants now. Cause you can't go nowhere. Oh my gosh, yep. Yeah. I'm covered. Let me try to stomp them off. Oh no, <laughs> they're everywhere you go. Everywhere I go, there's ants. Welcome to a Wolf Tales. Wow, we do the walk and talk. It's a walk and talk Wolf Tales. Now my last Wolf Tale was by request. And my last Wolf Tale, is that thing really gonna make a bunch of noise? My last wolf tail was about the worst day I ever had. I'll put a link to the in the video description below, and I'll put an end card at the end of this video, which will be popped up on the screen as an end card. All right, so since this wolf tail isn't going to be about the worst thing that ever happened to me out fishing. I'm gonna change it up and it's gonna be about the best days that I've ever had. And unfortunately, when I think of the best days that I ever had, it's really not on charters. Unless we look at charters as a block of time but one thing I have been doing on my community page if you nobody literally goes to anybody's channel I don't believe uh, nobody really nobody really goes to channels I guess but if you went to my channel 
or as or if you're subscribed to my channel, Captain Dave Sport Fishing, uh, there's this community tab that you can click, and that goes to as I've been telling everybody for a while now, it goes to sort of a forum setup where I make a post, and you can comment, and we can banter. Okay, it's getting kind of windy. I hope it's not too much wind. And uh, on the last couple posts on my community page, what I did is I put in a series of videos of my first, oh, this wind's getting bad. My first trip to New Orleans. And that is probably one of the top, top tier experiences, fishing experiences I've ever had. Because it was much more than fishing. Yes, I was supposed to go fishing. There is a guy out there in the New Orleans area that fished a ton. He was actually part of an organization, uh, the CCA Star Tournament Director things like that and we bantered back and forth I'm not gonna give his name and he said Dave whenever you come here give me a call and we'll hook up well I go there in the middle of February I told him I was going there to New Orleans me and my dad and I called him I believe soon as I got there and said hey can we hook up because I was thinking you know hey they love over there taking Florida boys fishing because, well, you know, they're, they're a little biased. Let's put it that way. They know what they got. We know what we got. All right. And me being from Jacksonville, uh, you know, they would have probably have just loved to show me what the fishing was like there. But I never really got to get on a boat and go with this individual. Because he never answered his phone. I left a message and he never called me back. So, you know, he extended an invitation and I tried to pick up on it. Probably just wrong timing. We were there the first week of February and you'll see in the videos series that I put on my community page. The videos are there. And that was, a, me and my dad spent three days, I believe, touring from Venice, Louisiana to Mandeville, Louisiana, around New Orleans. We stayed in New Orleans. Uh, it was just fantastic. For me, that was going to the literal Holy Grail of fishing, inshore fishing. I caught so many trout standing on the bank uh, of an RV park where we stayed. So check out those videos. I'll put those videos in the video description. You gotta click on the word show more. If you're on a phone, it's this little tiny arrow, as I said before on the YouTube app, to open the video description. That's where there's so much more information. But because of my dad, I've done a lot. For about 12 to 14 years, we always went to the Miami Boat Show in February. That was some memorable, memorable times. Had nothing to do with fishing. But if you have never been there, you are truly missing out on the, what would you call it? It's, it is the showcase for the entire marine industry in, down in Miami. And they hold it in February because they know everybody's wanting to be there. It's usually right around the Valentine's Day weekend week or whatever. 
So that's a memorable, memorable time for me. Took a few friends down there with us a couple times, went with other friends uh, another year. Always a hoot, staying in South Beach, Miami, because they used to hold the Miami Boat Show in South Beach or in, in Miami Beach. We stayed right there where uh, all the Art Deco old, old hotels are. The nightclubs are down the street. Oh my gosh, if I only had a YouTube channel and a GoPro back then. What are some other memorable times? Me and my dad for two years went sail fishing in Fort Pierce which is about five hours south of Jacksonville. When did we do that? In January, or right after Christmas. I believe it was after Christmas through possibly January 1st. Uh, we go down there. It is rough as a cob. It, <laughs> I had a 23-foot center console Maycraft with a T-top on it back then. We took my buddy Joe Caramelli, who's since passed, uh, him, my dad, and I. I went down there one year with some friends, Chris and Jeannie, and their 21-foot boat, and Jeannie's friend Kim. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. How rough it is. But once you get out there, you are going to catch sailfish. The first time I was ever down there, to tell you, it's like Louisiana, but with sailfish. I could stand on the bank throwing a matrix shad and a quarter ounce, three eighths ounce jig head and catch a trout in the industrial canal going from Lake Pontchartrain, which is God's country, that area to me. It's God's country, okay? And you could go down to Fort Pierce in December, January, and it was the same thing. We went out, we jigged up cigar men of Spanish sardines, uh, uh, thread fin herring, speedos, little mackerels, everything, blue runners, stuck them in the live well, ran out to deeper water than we'll ever, ever, I would ever fish here in Jacksonville. We ran out to first, I think 135. We ended up in like 225 feet of water, 12 miles out, I think it was. Jigged up bait at a buoy. And we had five sailfish before one o'clock in the afternoon. Very, very memorable. What my dad always called real, real offshore fishing. I mean, five sailfish before. We never caught a barracuda. We never caught a king mackerel. We never caught anything. We caught five sails. And I think the, the next day we went out, we, oh, we went out and we caught some dolphin and stuff like that. So there's some of the more memorable times for me personally of, it's always things that stick in my mind of going to places that are just like bucket list things. It is the biggest bucket list in my entire universe is to live and fish the whole Lake Pontchartrain Basin. If you're not familiar with that, check it out. I say that to people and they don't even know where it is, what it is. It's New Orleans and there's a giant brackish water lake, 52 miles across, approximately 26 to 28 north to south. Five parts per thousand of salinity full of rivers coming in other bayous and lakes and alligator infested places 
no tugboats, no ships, no huge commercial traffic. It's all about fishing, 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 fishing. Reefs, reef balls, shell beds where old, uh, you know, oil platforms used to be. And it's got an entire area that's a sanctuary. It's a sanctuary. They're saving it. Um, the wind's really blowing again. But uh, that are the two or three things that really stick out in my mind when it comes to fishing experiences. South Florida, I, it's a nice place to visit, but I, I, I could never live there. Um, I'm definitely more of a uh, sea trout, redfish, black drum, flounder kind of a place. And that's what Lake Pontchartrain and that area is all about. Check out those three videos on my communities page and or the links below where it says show more. That's where I will put them. I'll try to put a couple. I'll put the whole series down there of the videos that I made back when I started this YouTube channel. So uh, that's the wolf tale of the best. Miami Boat Show for year after year after year. Sail fishing, South Florida, where catching sailfish is like going out and catching sea trout in Lake Pontchartrain. Easy, easy peasy. So I've probably run way too long and I'm out to take a nice long walk. Need to burn some chicken that I just got done eating and uh, thanks for watching, is all I can say. Please look below. That's where on every single video that anybody ever posts, that's where they are putting more information, if you don't know. Uh, my dad jokes to me that I ought to do an entire video series of how to use YouTube. But... I would need some software. I don't have it right now. So I would want to have some computer software to do that. My biggest thing right now in the next week or two is not, uh, is not only getting all the trips out that I have planned and uh, the biggest thing is, is getting chainsaw and starting to get prepared for hurricane season. I gotta go rent a big pole saw with a chainsaw on the end of a 12 foot pole and I have to start whacking some branches because everything that's near my property or near my house or near my garage is my neighbors. And if you don't remember the video of a tree falling right in front of my truck at 4.30 in the morning. I did that video called When a Tree Falls in a Neighborhood, Does Anybody Hear It? I believe. Because nobody heard it but me. Because why? I go to bed early. I get up early. I was wide awake at 4 a.m. walking around the house. So, um, no, I don't do a lot of talking on the phone and chit-chatting with people. They want you to. Oh, they want you to. They want to book charters at 9, 10 o'clock at night. Well, Dave shuts it down at 8 p.m. Because usually I'm sound asleep by 8 or 9 p.m. and I'm up early. So, I'm exactly like my grandfather. He used to get up because he had to work at the steel mill. And I remember being a little kid and he'd be up at 3.30 in the morning even when he was retired. So, uh, that's that. That's the wolf tale. I know this one isn't all super duper, like, you know, terrible, like, oh my gosh, like the last one or anything like that. But people have asked me, what is my, you know, best experience, fishing experiences? 
And that's really what they were, personal. Now maybe the next one I will talk about is a few days that stand out. A few days that absolutely stand out in the charter fishing business and taking customers that stand out up in here as best days. But personally, mine's, my personal days and things like that are a bit different because it's, it's all the fishing, boating, community, world. That's what it is. I tell everybody, it's life by design. So, young anglers out there, do, do what I did. You do life by design so you could even do this as a single guy. No, I don't have a wife that's a doctor and she's footing the bills for everything. So, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. This has been a wolf tail walk and talk. Well, not really because I'm not walking. But I'm going to right now before it starts raining.